Hello, this is Nate, your host and partner on this journey, and welcome to Outcome Becomes Income. The goal of this channel is to create an all-inclusive community to build long-term wealth via the stock market. In any 20-year period, the stock market has never lost money and it has outpaced inflation. The barrier to entry has never been lower. Many brokerages no longer charge commissions to buy and sell stock. And with the addition of fractional shares, we can invest with as little as $1. There has never been more options available for us to invest in the market and become part owners of publicly traded companies. With some form of income, a brokerage account, time and patience, we can invest in a sound financial future together. Please join me as outcome becomes income. Hi, this is Nate with Outcome Becomes Income. Thank you for joining me. And today I want to talk about a quote from the famous investor, Benjamin Graham. He's probably considered the godfather of value investing. And value investing is looking to buy at a discounted price. If we think about an item that is on sale, if you could buy something for half price, you'd be getting a good value. And that's really what Ben Graham made his bones on was looking to buy a dollar worth of value for 50 cents. And he wrote a book called The Intelligent Investor. And it's probably the, the single best book on the concepts of value investing. Now, I read it and I thought it was very hard to understand. And a lot of it is still outdated. The book was written in the 40s. So a lot of his concepts don't really apply to valuating a company right now. But it is still a, a good book if you want to better understand the, the tenets of, of value investing and just the stock market and investing overall. But he's credited with so many quotes and I just heard one of them again recently and it got me thinking. And it goes something like, like this, that in the short term, the stock market is a voting machine. And in the long term, it's a weighing machine. And this quote has always made me think that this is the epitome of what, what popularity contests are. And by saying this in the short run, it's, it's, it's like tallying which firms are, which companies and which company stocks are, are popular and unpopular. But over the long run, the market, it then becomes like the weighing machine. It starts assessing real, substantive, tangible things about the company. Things like the cash flows, the debt that it has, how much profits it's generating, and things like that. So. I would encourage you to think about if you're starting to get invested and you're looking for individual companies, think about most recently the meme stocks. Things that come to mind are, are Hertz or GameStop or Bed Bath & Beyond. And these companies were looked at as ways to make a quick buck. They're all in the process of trying to do turnarounds. They're all extremely affected by the, the pandemic and, and lockdowns. But we look now that we're coming out of the other side of that, we start looking to those fundamentals that we're talking about. You can see that these companies are not necessarily the strongest. Their revenues aren't increasing. Their debt is increasing though. And really realistically, what you would wanna see is a company to make more money, need to borrow less money, and that money would accumulate over time. And then they could do things like buy back shares or pay dividends or just keep adding it to their bank accounts and, and having their, their worth build up. And none of these companies were, were doing that. So that's just a simple good example of the type of companies that maybe you should stay away from. Some other examples of companies that are extremely popular, uh, profitable, if we look at things like Apple or Microsoft, these are, are names that are synonymous with, with their everyday use or something maybe you go to get coffee every day or you pick up a hamburger at McDonald's. These are companies that are tried and true. They have very recognizable brand names, but consistently over time, they're also finding ways to make more money, whether it's raising their prices or, or cutting costs. But the bottom line is that they keep making more money and then in turn, that money is returned to shareholders. And that's the idea of what we'd be looking for. We really want companies that generate consistent cash flows and ideally are increasing, increasing those cash flows year over year. So to just go back to the quote again, in the short term, it's a voting machine. It's just like a popularity contest. But in the long term, metrics do matter. And 
the saying goes, cash is king. And companies that can consistently produce cash, those are what we'd be looking for. And even if those companies are being punished in the short term by the market, if they're being sold off or they're not moving anywhere, over time, eventually, those metrics will matter and the valuations will catch up and those companies will be rewarded. And conversely, the companies that are not doing well will be left by the wayside. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks for listening and I'll talk to you soon. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you're listening on a platform like Spotify, Apple, or Google, please leave a rating and review. This will help spread the word and get our message out there. And if there's anyone that you think that can benefit from this content, please share. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or just like to drop me a line, please feel free to do so. All feedback is welcome and I love hearing from listeners. You can follow me on Twitter at Becomes Income. Drop me a line at email outcomebecomesincome at gmail.com and see what pictures I'm posting on Instagram and TikTok at outcomebecomesincome. This is Nate, and until next time, thank you for being a part of Outcome Becomes Income.